Well, good morning and thank you very much for joining us. I am Yuri Folari. Uh, uh, tomorrow, uh, today, I guess there wasn't anywhere else we could go um, uh, talking really about um, Peter uh, Gregory Obi, as he said, he loves the name Gregory, uh, more widely known as uh, Peter Obi of uh, Labour Party, who came third behind uh, the president of uh, the country, Ajayibola Metinabu, and the second place runner up, Atiku Abubakar. So he came on air yesterday, um, you know in what some have described as an attention-seeking uh, outing. Uh, Felix Mocker, National Publicity Secretary of the um, ruling APC, has described the whole, the content of the speech as drivel. But effectively, what Peter Gregory Obi was, uh, was concerned himself with uh, was, um, you know, uh, the, the, the matter of, as he styled it, uh, Chief Ahmed Bola Tinumbu, that is the winner, Everybody knows him as President Tinubu or Ashwajibola Ahmed Tinubu. Uh, Peter Gregory will be preferred to use uh, Chief Ahmed uh, Bola Tinubu. However, those are tiny, petty, petty uh, details. The, the big deal, I think, is the fact that these, the entire content of his um, speech were, uh, are all before the Supreme Court and um, that he had brought this matter out in a press conference. A lot of people are trying to figure out, try to give it a fair shake, what exactly uh, was the objective. Okay, uh, our guest this morning, uh, our friend uh, Kasim Afegwa, former commissioner for information in Edo State, and also you know, a key member of the Presidential uh, Campaign Council of the APC that has now been dissolved. Uh, thank you very much, Kasim, for coming on the program. Thank you very much for having me. All right then. Um, I don't know where, uh, the first thing to note, uh, in fact, uh, let me ask our people, we, we have a package, perhaps we should put that package in context, just in case anybody missed it yesterday. It's on Peter Obi's uh, outing. Uh, let, let's take a snippet of that and then I'll come straight back to you. The controversy and debate over the certificate of President Bola Ahmed Tinubu from the Chicago State University may not be ending soon. Last week, candidate of the PDP, Ati Kwabubaka, pledged to challenge the release certificate at the Supreme Court. The new Nigeria People's Party, on its part, said it will not be part of Ati Kwabubaka's effort to unseat President Bola Tinubu. The party says it is not in court and does not want to be an interloper in the PDP's presidential candidate's case. The Labour Party candidate, Peter Obi, has also made his position known, saying that the certificate matter be put to rest with a proper explanation from the president. I can say to you so many people that I came to university together and left together, Soludo, I can call all of them. If you went to Suga at the time I was there, I'm one of the very few students everybody knows. And I say it without anything. So you can go and verify that one. The invitation of the PDP presidential candidate, let me retreat again. Whenever there's an issue of national interest, I'm involved in it, invited or uninvited, because about our country. There have been heated debates in the mainstream and social media over whether or not President Bola Ahmed Tinubu's academic records are relevant to Mr. Atiku's appeal and if the apex court will admit the fresh evidence. Recall that the presidential candidate of the PDP, Atiku Abubakar, had reached out to his counterpart in the NMPP and the Labour Party. While the NMPP says it's not willing, the Labour Party presidential candidate, Mr. Peter Obi, says he will join hands with the PDP presidential candidate, Atiku Abubakar, at the Supreme Court. Habib Alawao, TVC News, Abuja. Well, okay, that's a sort of a very wide uh, overview. We're really concerned with, uh, uh, shall we say, uh, Peter B's outing yesterday because it's in the nature, I don't know what else to call it, of a gang up. He's joined uh, forces with um, the second place uh, um, contestant in the presidential election, Atiku Abubakar, um, even though initially when um, 
uh, Waziri Adamawa Atiku Abubakar was going to go to court. I think he had invited uh, both him and Kwakwanzo to come on board with him. But uh, Peter Obey of the Labour Party had said it wasn't, uh, it wasn't going to be a party. It looks as if uh, things have changed a bit. But back to the, I don't know, as I said, Peter Mocker described it, uh, Peter Mocker is the National Publicity Secretary of APC. He described it as drivel, um, because people are still trying to find out what exactly was all of that about. And as I introduced earlier, our guest, Kasim Afegwa, uh, thank you very much for coming on once again. Uh, what do you make, Kazim, of uh, the outing of uh, Labour Party's uh, losing candidate, Peter Gregory Obi? Well, thank you very much uh, for the opportunity of this uh, interaction. I think, uh, Yori, don't blame these guys. They are so losers. You don't, uh, you don't flog a child and you expect that child not to cry. And in the process of crying, it's going to be murmuring and saying all manners of things just to convey his own pains. And that's exactly what is happening. Whether you call him Atiku Abubakar, you call him Gregory Obi and what have you, it's just unfortunate that they have not been able to swallow their pride and own up to the defeat of February 25th. 2023. It's very obvious that now they are no longer talking about, I want the election. I want the election. They are now going after Tinubu with issue of qualification to stand election or no qualification. They want people to believe their own narrative. But the narrative on the other side, they don't, they don't want anyone to believe. And you see, for Peter, we're not even recognizing that we have a president. It's quite unfortunate. The mere fact that he was able to conduct a press conference without people beating him up shows that there's a government in place that enforces rule of law. There's a government in place that ensures that there's protection to life and property. That means there's a government and there's a president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria and commander-in-chief of the armed forces. You know, when they behave so petty in this manner, what I just do is to laugh at them. Because uh, in any election, any electoral contest, only a winner is expected to emerge. No matter how painful your defeat is, you have to behave like a sportsman. Swallow your pride and own up. It's about the country. What do you have to put on the table? What do you have to assist the government of the day to add value you know, to our collective aspirations, our yearnings, you know? People keep talking about Nigeria in, so, in such a negative term. No, I will pride Nigeria as uh, one of the best places I can live. Because when you travel out of this country, you are just like a fish out of water. That's the truth. A lot of things we do and get away with here, it doesn't happen elsewhere. And when you want to enforce that kind of discipline, they will see, the same people will still call you names. The governor, uh, former Governor Wiki, a minister for FCT, is trying to fix Abuja. Go and look, go and go, go to the internet and see criticism and all of that. He's, 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 uh, he's chasing away uh, those who are, who are, who are inhabiting shanties across in, in FCT and they are, they are abusing hell out of him. He wants to bring, bring sanity into the system, but they would, people would, they wouldn't want to listen. We want to, we want discipline, but we don't behave as, as disciplined people. And so, for a, a man who contested as presidential candidate of Labour Party and wants to, Nigerians to uh, accord him that recognition as a candidate who wanted to preside over Nigerians, for him to even be undermining the government of the day is quite unfortunate. Uh, that is the more reason why he cannot smell as a rock. You know, as, as you say, uh, Kazim, uh, for a man who would be a uh, president to be behaving in this manner, by which I mean, um, how ethical is it? Uh, only the other day I referred to him and uh, Adamawa, uh, Wazira Adamawa, as a statesman. Somebody called in and objected quite vigorously uh, to that uh, particular characterization. But for a man who would be president to now be behaving in this manner, the matter is before the Supreme Court. Um, the, I don't know, the only thing that 
possibly could be gained by uh, P2B in all of this was attention. Uh, he wanted, it would seem to me, to get back on the front page. Well, uh, there's a, to, to some extent, uh, he has achieved that. But how ethical is it for a man who would be president to be uh, compromising the Supreme Court? All these matters are before it. He even said it somewhere along the line in his question and answers that this wasn't about um, politics, uh, the, the way he put it. He said this wasn't about politics, uh, this wasn't about uh, education, uh, I think it's about uh, ethics, the very ethics that I'm talking about. So I don't know how, whether, I don't know, it, it was very, very confusing. And then he was behind, uh, he had behind him a backdrop of uh, let's take back Nigeria. Didn't somebody tell Peter Obi that the election is over and that we have a president in place? You see, again, that is, their, that is their level of understanding of the dynamics of politics. They, they tend to think that if it is not them, then it should be nobody. That is the characteristics of bad losers, sore losers, who think uh, they, 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 they should be given the opportunity, you know, you know on, 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 a blank, on a blank slate to be president of Nigeria. Nigerians, 8.7 million Nigerians voted for Ashwajibola Metinubu. That has been fully, you know, uh, uh, that has been fully underscored by the tribunal. Now, you say you were not satisfied. You have raised 50 grounds of, uh, of appeal. You've gone to the Supreme Court and all that. The honest and transparent and a distinguished thing to do is for you to wait on the Supreme Court of the land to act on your grounds of appeal. Whipping up unnecessary sentiments that don't add up will not help your case. I was happy the other time when the Chief Justice of Nigeria was talking to the newly sworn in 23 judges when he said that don't allow public opinion and media trial inform the sanctity of the verdict you give at every point in time. You see, they just they will hold meetings, they set up committees of media, they talk they say, okay, let us hype, let us hype the media, let us hype these issues in the media, let's carry out a media blitz, let's scandalize, uh, scandalize uh, the president. Let's blackmail him and all that to generate the atmosphere for, to help the Supreme Court. But the issues we are putting before the Supreme Court, they are issues that have been attended by the uh, tribunal for which a uh, very sound judgment was given. So if you believe in the sanctity of the, judi of the judicial process, of, of the justice system in this country, you allow the Supreme Court to act on all of those issues. You don't preempt them. You don't, uh, you don't give them a guide. You don't give them a lead into what you think you desire. At any rate, Peter Obi came third in this last election. I told somebody, I said, dash him one million votes. He has not gotten there. Dash him 1.5 million votes. He has not gotten there. Dash him six states and tell him he, he, he got uh, 300,000, 300,000, 300,000 in six states, 1.8 million votes. He has not gotten there. So where is, the, where, is the, where is this whole noise about I want the election, I want, I know what to prove and all of that? Where is it coming from? We were all participants, we were partakers in this whole process from our different polling units, uh, ward level, our local government level, and all of that. We saw what transpired. And I keep telling people, an election that seven go city governors could lose senatorial elections is, some, for me, the best election that we have conducted in this country. You may, the, 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 the posters, those people who were doing predictions, were the ones who are putting uh, Peter Obi in this kind of lockdown. Because they, 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 they already gave him victory even before the elections were commenced. So for me, I think people who are reasonable, who are rational, should call Peter Obi to order and tell him that he should allow the Supreme Court to dispense with this issue once and for all. If you are even talking about certificate this, certificate that, we've seen reports, the one conducted by the BBC and, you know, is, is quite yeah. detailed, yeah. very that enriching. And that, that, is, that is a typical way of, of doing investigative journalism, you know, devoid of sentiments and parochialism. And so for me, 
when I read that report, I said, yes, this, are, this, 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 this is exactly how to do journalistic you know, uh, justice to an issue that's, that's at play. So if, uh, if they don't, they, meanwhile, they saw how authentic that report was, they now started putting it as a fake news. Yes. As if some of us are not, yeah. as, as now if some started, of us are not following. Fall. Yeah. They now started tearing the BBC with its uh, fact-checking. Uh, they started tearing that to bits. Uh, and I, when I say they, uh, if you look at the comments, oh, uh, I mean, the, if there were a thousand comments in there, it's... It, it, uh, Nine, over 900 of them uh, were coming from OB supporters who just did not want to believe or accept that what a detached purview of the, of, of the, of the landscape in the light of uh, all the CSU uh, documentation that Atiku Abubakar had you know, uh, received, they just were not happy because, as you had said earlier, it didn't go uh, their way. And so you see all sorts of uh, comments, even going as far to, from the sublime to the ridiculous, uh, saying that, aha, BBC itself has been settled. I mean, can you imagine? Can you imagine where we are? This is the kind of situation you that see, we have. You're in, that you're BBC fact-checking thing stung like hell. You see, the point, the point is that where you, where you, when a case is not going in your favor, they will want to clutch at every flood sand to remain afloat and, you know, voice out all manner of sentiments just to pollute the minds of their followers. You see, the, the BBC report confirmed my earlier position that the Chicago State University, as it were, did not in any way disown the certificate of uh, Mr. President. So, but for those who, are, who already have a sense of conclusion of the whole issues, they like to listen to their own voices. They like to hear themselves speak. The other day, Atikwa Wubaka said, oh, uh, he's doing a World Press Conference. He ended up in lamentation. Peter Obi was doing a press conference yesterday. He ended up ridiculing himself. You see, once you have tabled your issues before a court of competent jurisdiction, in this case, the apex court of the land, and you have filed for admission of fresh evidence, which the APC lawyers will also reply to, then you allow the court process, the judicial process, to take its rightful course and let's get to the issues. Then we will argue them out on point of law, not point of sentiments, not point of mediocrity, not point of uh, parochialism and selective amnesia. Because mm -hmm. what they're trying to do is a mind game. They are, doing a, they are running a mind game. Oh, let's, uh, let's scandalize our president, let's do this, let's do that. This president is bogged down with a lot of existential threats and developmental issues that needs our, his attention. And the man is crisscrossing the, the globe, trying to generate new ideas that can be a direct response to the challenges confronting us as a nation. Yeah. We need to thank God that, we have not, that things have not gotten bad to the level of uh, carnage that we are seeing elsewhere. Economic realities in different countries are nose diving, including the UK, including the US. Go and look at the statistics. So Nigeria is not an exception. You have a president who is putting he has, who has put on his thinking cap, choosing the right men that to plug in the leakages and all of that to so ensure that we generate a new thinking. And here you have persons who are supposedly. Uh, elder statesmen or partaken in the collective patrimony of this country, running commentaries that are antithetical to the kind of mindset that we should have now, the kind of reality that we should have now. So I see okay. them as sore losers, bad losers, and they will continue to agonize because one I moment. know that the issues before one this. Moment. Yes. Sorry, uh, one moment, Kazim. Uh, Reverend Dominic has joined us. Uh, good morning to you. Good morning, Chief Yori. Everybody is, uh, you get, 
I have uh, take the place of Ulsa uh, Abaka in this issue. Ulsa Abaka. Oh, I just heard that we lost that call, but even before we lost it, it was oh, so very, very low. Uh, so sorry, uh, Reverend uh, Dominic. Perhaps you can get back in. Uh, we're looking at uh, Peter Obi's um, outing yesterday, called it a, a press conference, a world press conference, and um, we're, that's what we're talking about. We'd like to uh, hear from you as well. Uh, Peter Obi, as you know, came third behind uh, Tiku Abubakar, who was second, and um, it, it wasn't even about the election, but as uh, our guest Kazim Afegwa has just said, it seemed to be to sort of um, un first seek attention. He got that. Uh, but then also in the process, maligning, um, ma 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 maligning the setup, ma 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 maligning the law and order uh, that we are working with, President Bola Ahmed Tinubu is in place. You are protesting that. You have taken it to the courts. You are not leaving it there. You are now, some have said, uh, the interpretation they get is that you are now whipping up uh, public sentiment, social media sentiment. And uh, again, as Kasim just pointed out, uh, the, the courts, you know, are sort of, they, they're not going to be led by social media. Uh, we even had vestiges of that in the, uh, in the appeal court, where social media does not concern the law. They're going to deal with the facts in front of them. So I don't know what value Peter Obi thought he added uh, to the situation. Well, Atiku, Atiku Abubakar had first of all gone forth. Now he comes after that, joining forces, uh, leading to people calling it a gang up. What does he think Nigerians are? Um, it's, it, it's, it's, it's befuddling, quite frankly. But it, go, it goes to how strongly he believes that from his third place position, in the presidential contest, there is any hope for him at all. That is another point that boggles the mind. Well, you see, uh, you see, I, just like I said earlier, you don't, uh, you don't uh, tell a child that is being flogged not to not to cry. He's been flogged yeah. thoroughly, yeah. Been, and he was flogged thoroughly again. during the elections Kasim, because. I beg your the post I, I beg your pardon, Kazim, for interrupting you, because Abri uh, Ibrahim has just called in. Uh, good morning, Ibrahim. Uh, good morning, Mr. Yori. Good, good morning, morning, sir. Thank you for calling here. in. I don't know his name again. So I former commissioner for Edo State. You see, thank you very I much. This, where we are today is has been it's Ibrahim from Kaduna. You see, man, you see this 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 certificate saga. I don't know. It is just unnecessary, and it's and it's bringing us uh -huh. more controversy. All those oblivious and unnecessary political sagacity is taking us nowhere. Why did I say so? You see, now, the two political gladiators graduator today has become a judge of their own case and a lawyer of their own case, and as well as their supporter. Look, the only way for us to go is to allow the judges to do their own way of doing things the way it should be. Look, Nigeria, we are not a banana republic. No matter, I stand to the comment, no matter anything that anyone has there, say he wants to say and bring Nigeria down, and again try to bring, to talk at least to point start in the name of the Mr. President as a person, it's not going to do us well. Because why? We have a country today, and we have a sitting government, which must go, which is going to take us to where we are. Now, every matter now is on uh, with the cause. Am I communicating? Every matter now is now with the cause. I don't know why we continue to overheat and hitting this policy the way we have seen. Look, Nigeria today, all this political hunting, all like all the social media hunt, we're not taking anywhere. Now, the first day this matter comes out, the CSU has come out to say, no, this matter is our product. Yes, we haven't given him this and that, but for the fact before the fact before them, they see it and they play it out. Which everybody is understand, but today they are trying to convince all of us in Nigeria. Look, no matter what, we are not a kid. A sitting governor, a sitting government, and indeed a sitting president is on the is is is, 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 is moving on. One thing will drag us back. The focus before us today is this: 
that they should not they should not be to bring or to make Nigeria to look as if as, 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 as a simple nation. No. In the heart of Africa today, Nigeria stands the solid and the vital of all black nations as far as the world is concerned, if I'm not mistaken. So no one person that says that he is data, Nigeria Guru does any one person or any matter any how you is Mr. Pitobi, Mr. Asiku, and the rest of them and their supporters, please. They should just give peace a chance and allow the court to do what is right for us. We are not going to go back because why? I don't know. I don't know how they're going to get the justice fairly. But Thank you. Thank you very much uh, for calling in, Ibrahim. Um, Kazim, I'll just take a quick break. Be right back. Stay with us, please.